Hello, everybody. We're going to finish up the book of Acts today. Um, in it, we're going to read from the New Revised Standard Version, Acts chapter 28, verses 17 through 31. Uh, yesterday, at the end of the reading, we heard that Paul stayed for two years in Rome, and he did so under a reasonable cloak of freedom of house arrest, where people could come and go, and uh, people had provided enough for Paul that uh, he could stay um, well, cared for. Anyway, so we're going to pick up at verse 17. Three days later, he called together the local leaders of the Jews. When they had assembled, he said to them, Brothers, though I had done nothing against our people or the customs of our ancestors, yet I was arrested in Jerusalem and handed over to the Romans. When they had examined me, the Romans wanted to release me, because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But when the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to the emperor, even though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and speak with you, since it is for the sake of the hope of Israel that I am bound with chains they replied, We have received no letters from Judea about you, and none of the brothers coming here, here has reported or spoken anything evil about you. But we would like to hear from you what you think. For with regard to the sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. After they had set a day to meet with him, they came to him at his lodgings in great numbers. From morning until evening, he explained the matter to them, testifying to the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus, both from the law of Moses and from the prophets. Some were convinced by what he had said, while others refused to believe. So they disagreed with each other, and as they were leaving, Paul made one further statement. The Holy Spirit was right in saying to your ancestors through the prophet Isaiah, Quote, Go to this people and say, You will indeed listen, but never understand. You will indeed look, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull, and their ears are hard of hearing, and they have shut their eyes, so that they might not look with their eyes, and listen with their ears, and understand with their heart and turn, and I would heal them. End quote. Let it be known to you, then, that this salvation of God has been sent to the Gentiles. They will listen. He lived there two whole years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. There's some neat stuff in here in terms of his interaction with the, the Jewish people. But in verse 26, when he's quoting through uh, the prophet Isaiah, saying that that, that was uh, inspired by the Holy Spirit to, to the ancestors, I read an example one time of trying to help a person come to know the grace of God and Jesus Christ, um, sometimes maybe agnostic or even atheistic people, who uh, you would want to share it with, and they say, I will not see it, I do not see it. Um, kind of the, the, the metaphor, the, the illustration of it. If you could imagine life has placed us on a beautiful hilltop and it faces the sunset. And at sunset, we try to share the beauty of what's before us with the person sitting next to us. And with their back turned and with their eyes closed, they are not convinced of the beauty of the sunset Perhaps the person says, I don't believe in a sunset. I do not see a sun and I do not see anything setting in the sky. And the person says, well, if you'd but turn around, you could see it. And the person may turn around and then they say, I do not see anything. I do not see any sun and I do not see any beauty of a sunset. And then with great compulsion, the person's saying, you know what? If you'd open your eyes, you could see it. And yet the person says, if I needed to open my eyes, my eyes would have already been opened. I do not see a sun and I do not see a sunset. 
And the person of faith, (laughs) exasperated, shakes their head and just says, if you would but open your eyes, you can't imagine the beauty that you could see. It's that kind of a frustrating story sometimes, or at least I know it's been for me, where people suffer needlessly or where they um, ask questions that God has definitively answered, certainly in Jesus and uh Trying to say, oh, but listen, God is, God does love, God is answering. And then they just say, I do not see it. I will not see it. If the answer was supposed to be, I would have already known it. Um, I feel for Paul. I also celebrate the fact that the Gentiles, that's you and me, that we did hear. That many of us did find it. This is the end of the story that we know of Paul. Uh, We do know historically that uh, shortly after the conclusion of this, that Paul was martyred. Uh, Legend has it that um, he was uh, taken to the edge of the town of Rome, and there uh, he's either beheaded or he was bled out. Um, But basically, um, he ended up dying a capital capital, uh, crime. Sometimes not all lawbreakers, not everybody who is guilty by the ways of man is guilty in the eyes of God. That's something that still can happen today. St. Paul, let's pray. God, we thank you for St. Paul. and We thank you for his faithfulness and his foibles. God, we've learned from both of them. And we thank you, God, for the faithful people, uh, for Luke who wrote this down, for those who have passed it from generation to generation, and God in the last 100, 150 years for the people who have taught us to read so that instead of the Bible being something that only priests and uh, pastors could know and read, that all of us have access to it, how often is it, God, that we take it for granted? We let Bibles collect dust and become family heirlooms. But the faith that is revealed through it, somehow we keep equally on a shelf to gather dust. Help us to be faithful, God. Help us to answer the call before us in this generation. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.